Wine is meant for enjoyment, but there are certain things people do in the context of drinking and serving wine that are highly annoying to many wine aficionados. And you can include WSJ wine columnist Letty Teague in that group of wine experts. She's here to discuss some of the wine habits that really annoy her the most <laughs> and how you can avoid them. Welcome to you. How are you? <laughs> I'm peevish. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it's a pretty cool list, though. Uh, the one that I really liked. And, and it really resonated with me was the wine dumping waiters. Yeah, there's a lot of that, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, it's deeply annoying because you know exactly what they're doing when they're when they're like, let me just you know, pour, and they, they don't even ask, of course, they just you know dump out the the bottle in your glass. And yeah. so they're trying to move the table, or exactly. Okay. Uh, is that an American phenomenon mainly? You know, uh, that's a good point. You know, I, I've only noticed that really in in, in American restaurants, um, and also you know, like and, and restaurants you know high and low. I mean, not necessarily the places you might think where they would be you know rude enough to do that, but right. there's some pretty because in Europe you can stay all day there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so so don't do that first of all, folks. <laughs> if you're a waiter. <laughs> okay, um, and also. And this one also resonated mm -hmm. because I think I'm one of the biggest offenders. Serving uh -huh. wine at the wrong temperature. Oh yeah, which is that's why we have this glass of ice here. Um, you know, and it's a it's a restaurant thing, and it's also a you know an at home thing. Um, and and certainly, it's not that big a problem when the white wine is too cold, and, and that's a more frequent you know problem because obviously you just wait, or you can sort of cup it in your hands and and uh, and warm it up a bit. But with a too warm red, um, I actually uh, um, credit uh, uh, this late wine writer. His name is Alexis. Best pull off with coming up with what he called the four second um, rule, and that's to put in. Well, first of all, we want to taste this wine, which is you know room temperature. It's been sitting on my desk for a while, which okay. too many red wines are in people's houses and in and, and in and in restaurants, you know, because it's just you want it to be cool, you know, sort of cellar temperature. You got me self conscious so, now. Here we are. <laughs> okay, so I just tasting right. it to see what the the temperature is. See, that's a little bit warm, you know, and okay. when a wine is. Is overly warm. You just you taste um, alcohol and and you don't really taste fruit. Oh, I've lost it. Okay, that's four seconds. Swirl it around and now see what you think. Okay. And how much cooler the wine is actually going to be just in that four seconds. Mm. Yeah, Isn't it definitely so, makes it's a, a difference. Remarkable and I can taste the grape aspect. Exactly, of it. you can taste. It's like the acidity and the fruit is there instead of just sort of this this alcohol thing. And I think that and that's one of the one of the things that I'm most peevish about. But at least it has a simple solution. Even though sometimes people look at me askance when they're like, well, you know, what do you what do you need this uh, you know these ice cubes for? And you know, are you putting this? You know, and of course, you know, they they assume that I'm going to leave it in my wine. And how do you know like what the ideal temperature is? How do you research that? Just on the you internet know, or if it's if it's Cool, you know, you just want the the the, um, the red wine to be cool and the white wine, you know, to be fairly cold. And I mean, the temperature. I don't know anyone that's going to stick a thermometer in their wine, so <laughs> I would give you a, I would give you a number, but in, in what. <laughs> Unless you're, you're of a particular sort that carries around a the thermometer, it won't do any good. But you can tell just by the bottle yeah. you know, if, if, it's, if it's cool enough. Okay, yeah. we're going to make some people really feel self-conscious here. This uh, this idea of the pseudo-collector. Oh. The person, <laughs> you compare them to serial daters. They want the chase, but not the commitment. Yeah, you know, it, <laughs> it's true. You know, and, and you know the difference. It, it, I think it's like with wine, like with anything. You know, people that, that really care about something and really collect something and, and do it seriously, and they do their, their homework. They follow something diligently. They know about the region. They know about the producers. And then there are the people that, that they they want to be on the right mailing list, and they want to have the you know high scores, and they they sort of want the flash without the the actual commitment um, of really getting to know a wine, a producer, a region. So, yeah, it's kind of like you know. Well, guys, I shouldn't say guys, maybe women do this. I mean, you know, it's sort of chasing after the latest fabulous thing when real collectors make a commitment. You know, they, they invest, they collect. Yeah. All right, folks, if you want to read the rest, make sure to, to tune in to WSJ.com and read Letty's column, okay? Thanks a lot to Thanks. you. Thanks. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks You're for now the wine. cool red. All right. Well, that's it for lunch break. Make sure that you tune in tomorrow. I'm Lee Hawkins.